Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. In 1969, the Beatles were in, short hair was out, and the Air Force slammed the door on Project Blue Book, the U.S. government's only acknowledged study of UFOs and extraterrestrials. By terminating official interest in flying saucers and little green men, the Air Force thought that public interest in UFOs would also disappear. It didn't, and it still hasn't. Several important milestones captured the nation's attention in 1969. Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon. Flower power peaked in a muddy farm in upstate New York. And the war in Vietnam was raging under Richard Nixon's watch. And on December 17, 1969, few were aware that the Air Force, with little fanfare, terminated its 22-year-long Project Blue Book. Veteran UFO investigators like Don Berliner have been asking why ever since. From the shutting down of Blue Book until today, the Air Force hasn't said anything beyond, we've studied the subject, there's nothing to it, we've lost interest. Uh, I don't believe it. Berliner believes that the military has covered up the UFO reality from day one, ever since the very first sighting the Air Force examined. Kenneth Arnold's disturbing saucer sighting of 1947. Soon after, growing concerns about national security led to the creation of Blue Book. Since the Air Force has the responsibility of protecting our skies, if there's something flying around, they better know what it is. Because there was fear initially that they might be Soviet. As the program grew and additional sightings uh, were investigated, they suddenly decided, well, there is a possibility that uh, these things are from uh, extraterrestrial origins. This didn't go down well with the higher-ups. They wanted everything explained, uh, no matter how it was done. The kind of explanation the higher-ups were demanding was not one that countenanced visitors from another planet. This was never more evident than in 1952, during the infamous UFO flap over Washington, D.C. Despite solid radar returns, Blue Book said it was either weird weather or a misidentified weather balloon. Hundreds of reports showed the data and the explanation have no relation to each other. A typical case, two military pilots chase something that looks like an, an aluminum 50-foot disc. And when it's all over, Blue Book decides that it was two balloons, not one. They only saw one thing, but it ends up as two balloons. It's not the sort of thing where you could argue the fine points. There are no fine points. Even the Air Force conceded that they couldn't explain everything. When Blue Book closed in 1969, 5% of all cases were still categorized as unknown. Ufologists say the government is being less than candid about what they really know. But a filmmaker and Defense Department consultant disagrees. I don't see a, a cover-up. I think that they're very puzzled by this phenomenon and can't get a handle on it. And it's sort of like, I don't think they want the public to know that they don't have the answer for it. So maybe that's where this conspiracy idea comes from. Robert Friend headed up Blue Book from 1958 to 1963 and insists that the project was open-minded about UFOs. UFOs exist, alien spacecraft, that's another thing. I don't believe all these people are running around uh, reporting things that they imagine. They see something, and that's a UFO. It's unidentified, and it's an object. But that's still not an Air Force mission. The Air Force's concern was whether or not it had any intelligence value and whether or not it constituted a threat to our national security. Ufologists don't believe that Robert Friend is hiding the truth just that he wasn't in on all the secrets. Whether or not there was a second or third investigation uh, behind the smoke screen of Project Blue Book is uh, still highly debatable. Uh, I certainly hope there was. I'd hate to think that Project Blue Book was the best we could do. If a hidden agenda existed, Berliner was determined to expose it. In 1974, he obtained Air Force permission to copy nearly 600 of the more than 12,000 cases in the official Blue Book files. There were dozens of file drawers full, and I only had a week, so I had to concentrate on the unexplained cases. And so I managed to get all the information, including witness names. The Air Force then decided that they were afraid of suits under the Privacy Act if the names of witnesses got out. 
So they pulled the files out of circulation, removed all identification of witnesses, forgetting that I already had hundreds of them. The Air Force sent the newly censored documents to the National Archives in 1976, and those are what UFO researchers will find to this day. Thousands of documents with identifying information blacked out or unreadable. They wanted to make it as difficult as possible for people to reinvestigate cases. You can't tell if a report came from uh, a nearsighted plumber or from the commander of an Air Force fighter squadron. According to Friend, blackouts protect private citizens, not the government. I'm not saying that there isn't life somewhere in this huge cosmos. What I am saying is that I don't believe that anyone yet has solved the problem of getting across these vast distances. One Blue Book investigator who didn't toe the party line was J. Allen Hynek, an astronomy professor who would later coin the term close encounters of the third kind. Dr. J. Allen Hynek was the Air Force consultant in astronomy, and he had been working for the Air Force since 1948. He had been a rather avid skeptic about the whole thing until he got to the Lonnie Zamora case. In 1964, Lonnie Zamora reported that an ovoid spacecraft had landed near Socorro, New Mexico. It was a pivotal case for a lot of skeptics because Zamora, a police officer, was such a credible witness. And his report was followed by more reliable sightings all over the country. So many, in fact, that at Heineck's urging, the Air Force commissioned its first scientific UFO investigation. And the University of Colorado took the contract for about a half a million dollars and studied it for about two years before they issued their report. And then when their report came out negative, then the Air Force said, OK, we're out of the UFO business. Paul believes the panel was intentionally misled and that their report was an elaborate ruse and a defining moment in UFO history. Stanton Friedman defines it as the moment the government alienated millions of its people. Most people think most people don't believe in UFOs, even though all the polls have consistently shown not only that most people do believe in UFOs, but that the greater the education, the more likely to believe in UFOs. The legacy of Project Blue Book is that the Air Force could have done a terrific job of investigating thousands of potentially important UFO cases, but didn't. A ton of information was ignored. But the information is out there, somewhere, and we all have the right to see it, ufologists say. But while researchers continue to unearth evidence of a cover-up, the Air Force continues to insist that UFOs pose no threat, do not advance science, and do not come from outer space. But lingering doubts, even within the hallowed halls of the Pentagon itself, indicate that the death of Blue Book may have been premature. In 1969, an American citizen inquiring why Project Blue Book was dropped likely received a form letter stating, quote, there is no evidence to indicate that further investigation of UFOs is warranted, end quote. And if you inquire about Blue Book at the Air Force today, you will receive an almost identical form letter. Until next time, remember, no mystery is closed to an open mind. For sightings, I'm Tim White.